Thank you for that lovely welcome and that invitation to collaborate. Um, many of us, I think, might want to have a further conversation with, with you about that. Um, thank you for having us here as well for, to, um, to mark the beginning of Inno Innovation Month. It's a, it's a great place. I've just had the very quick tour. It's a lot bigger than it first seems. It kind of goes round and round and round and round and round and all the way around here. Um, so if you get a chance to have a, a quick look around, please do. Um, I also just wanted to congratulate you on the recent event that you had, Sarah, um, which was the Speed Dating uh, for Startups event, um, which was hosted here uh, and was part of the, uh, the Ribbit program. Uh, if, you haven't, if you don't know about Ribbit, uh, R-I-B-I-T dot net. Have a look. Just look at it on your phone right now. Uh, it's a marketplace being uh, set up um, led by Data61 for uh, uni students uh, to be matched with employers for job placements. It's very clever uh, and it's, it's growing like mad. And so there was a kickoff event here in Canberra uh, for the Canberra instalment of it. I would also like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. And I'd like to welcome you all here uh, to the launch of 2016's Innovation Month. And I'd like to thank the Public Sector Innovation Network for organising it. This is the fifth Innovation Month, uh, having started as Innovation Week in 2011. <coughs> I note the election result is not clear. Uh, and Glenis Beecham sends her apologies. Uh, she's somewhat distracted this morning, uh, continuing to polish uh, various coloured briefs uh, from red to blue to purple uh, to brown. Uh, and uh, she said to say, of course, that much, much, much in the same way as, as Sarah did, that regardless of uh, the outcome, uh, public sector innovation will continue to be a big challenge for all of us and an exciting opportunity. All of us here today, members of the APS with a strong in in interest in innovation, we've achieved a lot since the last Innovation Month. Um, the reality of innovation in the public service uh, has become increasingly apparent as a need. It's not a nice to have, not an extra initiative that we tack on on the side of our organisations. It really is a core function for all of us and essential in terms of us uh, meeting the demands of uh, a, an ever hungry public for better public services. And we're all, as everyone keeps saying, living in a time of massive transformation and disruption. Uh, and it's no different for us. In fact, I suspect it's only going to gather pace for us. Um, and it's not something we should avoid either. It'd be a temptation to sort of um, resist disruption. Um, but just as industry can't avoid it, um, government can't either, and the public service certainly can't. There's lots of ways in which you can see us rising to that challenge. There's lots of really good examples of innovation, and I'll touch on a few of those shortly. But it's, it is being led from the top, and, and Glennis wanted me to draw your attention to the fact that there is actually a Secretary's Committee on Transformation. Um, many Secretary's Committees are kind of little known things. They exist perhaps on pieces of paper in an almost mythical kind of way, because many of us <coughs> don't actually get to have much of interaction with them. But that, uh, that committee is definitely looking to the future of the public service. It's very much invested in the first instance in a range of things to do with uh, more on the efficiency side, a very strong focus, for example, on the shared services agenda. But it's also increasingly focused on things like digital disruption and the Digital Transformation Office. Um, as you know, the leader of the public service, Martin Parkinson, uh, has signalled he's on the lookout uh, for great ideas. Uh, and he's in particular looking for step change ideas as well, not just small incremental improvements, but step changes. And there, there, there's been fantastic to see many of the real step changes uh, that, have, that have come forward in the, um, the inaugural innovation awards. 
which had been a partnership between um, the Institute of Public Administration of Australia and Drew, Drew Baker, their CEO, is here somewhere. It's true. Uh, and the Public Sector Innovation Network. Uh, and you can see many examples of them around the room, you know, from the, um, the new web content management system of GovCMS up the back, uh, the ATO's small business fix-it squads and cloud software authentication and authorisation, uh, the patent analytics hub from IP Australia. Are IP Australia here today? Over, over there, right? Very good. Um, and the DFAT Innovation Exchange, which who are, who are up the back, and the Mineral Potential, potential Mapper uh, from Geoscience Australia. They're all great examples of transformational change. One of my roles is to chair the APS Innovation Champions, which is a group of um, senior SES gets together once a month uh, to share what's going on in our respective agencies, try and build some peer support around innovation across the APS, and we also try to push along a few key projects. And I wanted to just touch on a couple of those. Um, there's two in particular that we've, we're, we're backing in at the moment. One is around policy crowdsourcing, um, and the Department of Finance has taken the lead on that. Part of the same team, actually, that's brought you um, GovCMS. And they've completed their internal uh, research and about to embark once we get out of caretaker, which might be a little while yet, uh, on the external um, part of that research around looking at various platforms and underlying um, uh, processes to support crowdsourcing of policy ideas engaging with the public. At one level, it's not a new idea, um, but it's not something we've done in a terribly systematic way uh, across the Australian public service. It's tended to happen more on an ad hoc, project by project kind of basis. Another project that we're exploring is uh, a design thinking mentoring program. So the idea here is it's, it's a trial and it's buddying up um, experienced designers with less experienced designers and giving the, the less experienced ones the opportunity to actually come to the workplace of the um, more experienced one and see what it's like, how they do their work, get a, get a chance to actually see in real the real operation of uh, a more experienced and, and in some ways more normed and embedded um, process of design work as a way of building skills across the APS. Of course, uh, another um, development this year is the awards itself, uh, which as I mentioned before has been a, been a partnership. We got 83 entries uh, for the awards, uh, from which 12 finalists were selected. And you can see some of the work of the finalists here today. Um, and there were four awards categories. Innovative solutions, recognising a new or improved solution to an existing problem. Engaging with the edge, that is engaging with new methods or technologies, new trends or issues um, that will affect core work or new thinking or frameworks about how that work might be done, or engaging with new partners. Culture and practice, recognising initiatives or contributions that help strengthen an organisation's capability for innovation. And finally, digital transformation. So it's been, it's been great to see, and I understand the judges, who I was going to be a judge and then I couldn't at the last minute, but the judges were very impressed with the, the quality of the um, uh, uh, of the entries uh, and there'll be an event as part of Innovation Month, which I think keeps flashing up on the screen here, uh, on the 27th of July in the evening uh, in the Department of Human Services new design hub uh, to award, is that right? Is it in the design hub? Yeah, to, to make the awards uh, for the winners. Um, but in some ways it doesn't matter who wins, uh, it's just great to see so many great examples of step change innovation. Um, I wanted to just say just a few words about um, how my own department, Department of Industry, Innovation and Science, um, is grappling with the, the challenges of innovation. Um, just to give you a sense, and many of you will be having the same sorts of experiences in other departments and agencies. Um, 
we've, we've in the first half of this year launched our own alpha of our innovation strategy uh, and more recently have um, established um, uh, an innovation lab called BizLab. Um, we've very much taken an approach which says innovations in, in our department uh, should not be about extracurricular activity. Uh, it's not about um, sort of small projects off to one side. It's about our core work. Innovation actually should drive change in the, in the big things that we do. Very much a learning by doing approach. Uh, hence having an alpha for a, <laughs> a strategy uh, on which we're getting lots of feedback and, and seeking to now iterate. Um, we haven't sought to create lots of top-down cumbersome process. Uh, but rather focused more on behaviours and values. Um, and we've encouraged uh, an approach which is sort of um, big ideas and small ideas. So big ideas including linking to many of our own big efforts at change, which include things like our own single business service initiative, which is about um, making things better uh, for businesses that engage with us, with a single uh, contact centre, single business, uh, single website, business.gov.au, and a single national outreach network. Uh, we've also focused on areas, for us, around open data uh, and big data. We're seeing that is a, a big thing that we're wanting to do. But we're also mindful that, of course, you've got to have a bottom-up approach too, and many of the good ideas that you'll have about uh, changing the way we deliver services or new policies or new ways of doing things will come from, the, from our staff. So we're developing what we're calling an ideas pathway for our staff. And of course, we'll have an ideas um, management platform. We're really excited about establishing BizLab um, and uh, just recently announced the appointment of um, the lead for that lab. Uh, it's a, a woman called Jana McCann, who's um, going to be moving to Canberra from Sydney uh, with a really strong private sector background in innovation, uh, including working with uh, Coca-Cola and uh, CBA. So, that was just a little bit on what we're up to. Innovation Month's very busy. It's great to see. Lots of departments are getting involved and um, the major themes this year are disrupt, develop and display. Um, I'm really thrilled that there's going to be a lot of displaying going on because um, one of the things our staff have been telling us in our own department is people really need to see it to get it as well. Uh, so seeing lots of examples of innovation is a great way for people to then build confidence and understand uh, what, they, what they might be able to achieve as well. In terms of the events, um, it's a feast. It's a smorgasbord uh, and it goes for the whole month. So you will have seen them flash, flashing up on the screen here. From tomorrow, Department of Health uh, hosting their uh, Future Frontier Innovation Conference um, to the Canberra Innovation Network itself uh, running a series of workshops teaching public servants the skills uh, that they need to learn in, in terms of lean startups. Um, also a, a joint um, uh, hope sh uh, set of workshops from the network and the Australian Centre for Social Innovation around creating the conditions for social innovation which um, is really important and often um, uh, less understood part of the innovation um, ecosystem. And having, uh, having a social policy background originally myself, I'm actually pretty interested in, in what's going on with that one. You've got the Department of Infrastructure and Regional Develop hosting a disruption innovation workshop. Uh, you've got uh, the comms department and my own department hosting guest speakers from state government innovation initiatives to learn what we can from what's happening in, in state governments. You've also got the Australian Futures Project uh, presenting on its complex problems pilot. I don't know if any, everyone will be familiar with this, but it's a really exciting 12-week program where there were cross-departmental teams, six, group of, six groups of six uh, cross-departmental teams tasked with coming up with responses uh, to challenges and opportunities um, Australia will face in relation to Industry 4.0. So I think it'd be really interesting, not just to see the outcomes, but also to understand what the process has been like for the, for the teams that have been engaged in it. Of course, there will be another instalment of GovHack uh, towards the end of the month. 
And finally, as I mentioned before, the presentation of the awards, uh, uh, the inaugural awards for APS Innovation. So if you're looking for all that stuff, just a reminder, it's on innovation.govspace.gov.au. And here's just a little extra plug. I understand that website's about to move to GovCMS uh, as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. So uh, thank you very much for coming today. Have a wonderful Innovation Month. Take the opportunity to have a look at the finalists' presentations here uh, today and have a chat. Thanks very much. And thanks again to Sarah for hosting us.